Good morning. My name is Jonathan Lowenstein, Application Specialist at Intertechnology in Canada. We represent micro measurements and uh, today I'm going to show you how to install a advanced sensor technology strain gauge that comes pre-wired so that one doesn't have to do any soldering. I'm going to show you how to install this particular gauge with a three wire gauge, a linear gauge onto aluminum beam and uh, this is how, how, we, how it's going to be shown. What we have here is the gauge uh, data sheet. It's the C4A linear gauge with 10 feet of lead wire on it and we have the gauge here in a package, 10 pieces in a, in a package. I take it out of the protective package. You can see that we have the gauge itself with lead wire uh, attached and I'm going to install this on an aluminum beam uh, as an example so that you can see the process how easy it is to install. So what we have here is an aluminum beam with uh, a mark where I'm going to place the gauge so that under cantilever loading we can apply strain to the gauge. So I'm going to place this like this and I'm going to take uh, initial cleaning. I'm going to take the CSM 3 degreaser uh, to initially pre-clean uh, pre the beam. I'm going to fold this up like this. And I'm going to apply the cleaning over here, rub it very well to remove the dirt. If I look at that, I can see that I'm removing some dirt that's on the surface due to the rolling process in producing the aluminum beam. Do that again. I, I have much less contamination on the on the cotton swab. I'm going to put this on the side here. I'm going to take uh, the 320 grit carbide paper and I'm going to start abrading the surface to, to expose it. And what I like to do, we can, we can apply this like this. I'll take off a piece like that and I'm now going to abrade it in the one direction. Look at that there, I can turn that around. What I like to do to make sure that we keep a clean surface to work on, I will take some of this cleaner here and mop this up. And I will now repeat that. What I'm going to do is to put some conditioner down here. And I'm going to abrade this in circles to get below
to get below the surface. What I need to find out as quickly as possible is whether it's a good surface to apply strain gauges to. I'm trying to make sure there are no blow holes in the surface once I've got below the striation marks that are created by the rolling process. My first uh, issue is to make sure that I can see a clean surface. I'm just wiping generally just so that I can get to the, the bottom, uh, get underneath the corrosion that's on the beam as we receive it, as, as received. And now I can see a bit more clarity, but I can see that uh, on this beam we have striation marks, rolling marks. We may not be able to remove everything because they're quite deep. I'm using 320 grit paper uh, so I'm going to try that once again and I'm using the conditioner just to help abrade and get below the surface here. I'm going to inspect the surface and that looks reasonable. Uh, I'm going to stop there at the moment, clean this up and now I want to um, start prepping the surface properly for gauge installation. So I'm going to uh, start with uh, Again, I'm going to use the four, 400 grit paper, the finer paper, and I'm going to take, a, take the conditioner and put it on the surface here, like that. And what I'm doing, uh, the, the, way I, the techniques that I've come across, is instead of rubbing up and down to avoid, to avoid uh, water or any contaminants or liquid contaminants to, to wick its way along the surface uh, what I'd like to do is actually abrade in circles so there's random striation marks on the surface to inhibit uh, water liquids getting through from under the coating final coating on the gauge so applying firm pressure with the thumb on the surface here, on, on the material, on the carbide paper, and uh, rubbing it in circles to do a final polish finish with 400 grit paper. And now I'm going to take some fresh uh, cotton swabs and I'm going to. Wipe this here and take it through from the end. That's going to be gauge all the way through and throw this away. There I have contamination. I can take some more and likewise do the same and start at the one end and bring it through and dry it right away with a 
clean piece. I can see I picked up dirt there, so I'm going to, one can repeat each step until you satisfy that you have completed the step properly. It takes half a sec, a half a minute or less to repeat the process. But only when you have, I've got dirt there because I came, I came out, out of the clean area. I'm going to put this on this side and likewise run through like that and I see that I'm getting a, a cleaner finish. So I'm going to take that and rub it. What you don't want to do is to leave any of the conditioner or the neutralizer liquid on the surface to evaporate because it leaves a film on the surface that's going to interfere with the bonding of the gauge to the material. So I'm going to take that like that and wipe it and then take a clean one and bring it back and wipe it off. And there I have it. So I'm going to clean up underneath here. Now we have not yet completed the, 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 the process of cleaning. So at this point I'm going to look at this like this and have a look at the surface. I'm going to be applying the strain gauge, center of the strain gauge, over here, somewhere over there. So I'm concerned about where the gauge is coming at that particular point, the line and mark on the beam. And I can see, although I have some striation here, they're not that deep. And when I apply the adhesive, it'll, it'll cover it. But more importantly, when I have a look at at the surface, I'm looking to see if there's any porosity, any holes, uh, air, air holes in the material when the material was formed in the process of uh, producing the aluminum, uh, the, the beam. Uh, I am going to, you know, I'm happy that there's no blow, blow holes. So I can now go to the next step. Well, before I even do that, what I'm, sorry, the, ne the next step that I'm going to do is to use the 400 grit paper. So I'll put this aside over here and I've got the four, uh, 400 grit paper over here. Uh, let me just have a look here. Okay. Um, So I'm going to take the conditioner A, I'm going to apply it to the surface like that, and then I'm going to braid in circles. I'm going to take another one of these cotton swabs and I'm going to just wipe it off in one direction. So I've dried that thoroughly and I, when I'm cleaning up I'm actually wiping from the clean area towards the dirty area and I'm, I'm lifting it off there and I'm now I'm going to inspect this and I can see that there's a, a good finish on the surface. Uh, it's clean. There's slight striation marks along the length from the rolling and unfortunately you can't, it could be quite difficult to get b below that, those marks. So, having said that, I 
can now put down an alignment mark on the beam so I know where to put the strain gauge center line, uh, the center of the grid at a particular location. And I've got marks here which is about two inches from one end for the cantilever beam. So I'm going to mark to, to physically look for the center of, the, of, the, of these alignment lines and I will put it like this. Now, okay. What I'm going to use in this instance, normally you can use a, a 4H pencil, which will leave a, a, a mark there, but I'm going to, uh, uh, to use a, the explorer, the back of the explorer, which is this end here, not the sharp needle end, but the, the round surface at the back there and I'm going to align it very carefully. Take one takes one's time for each process to make sure that you have it lined up correctly. And then I just rub gently across the surface like that. And I can now I can have a look at that and very clearly with the good light that I have above me. I can see that mark on the surface for alignment and if I check either side I've got these alignment marks over here I can check whether it's true or not and the other side the same and they they line up when I have a look at this by eye I can see that this is looks good it's, it's 90 degrees to the edge and I've checked it with the, the marks on the side that, that come with the beam and I don't need a vertical line because by using my eyes I'm going to center the, the gauge at the center of this you know to line it up so I have everything I need you know to, to install the gauge I know where to put it so having said that I've conditioned the surface and now I want to apply I'm going to clean this again because I've been touching it and we'll remove this here so I will take this uh, uh, start again here to re-clean and I'm going to do that like this and I'm going to wipe straight across I'm going to turn this around and I'm going to wipe this and dry it so I, I have a cleaned area there I've cleaned it, it's dry, and I'm now going to apply the neutralizer. And I'm what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use some um, cotton swabs and I'm going to apply some to the surface where I'm going to bond the gauge and I'm going to scrub it. I can see the dirt coming off here, so this is removing the dirt that's on the surface. Okay, so I'm going to finish off with cleaning up with a neutralizer over here. I'm going to wipe across, turn this around, and take this across like that. Take another one and physically dry it like that. I'm going to do this again. Okay, so I close that so it doesn't, uh, it doesn't knock over and contaminate the surface. 
so I have a cleaned area to work with. I'm going to bring, I'm going to take this, my gauge, I'm going to, I, I'm going to pull this off here, I'm going to remove this so that I can have a bit of lead wire coming off so that I can control things and I'm just going to tie this again to keep it together like that so now I have okay so to continue I what I'm going to do now is to set up alignment marks to put protective tape around the, the strain gauge to to limit the amount of adhesive that spreads out when we are bonding the gauge. So I'm going to bring this carefully to the surface. I'm approximating the center of the gauge on the, uh, with the line. I'm lining it up where I'm going to install it. And I'm going to make marks on the side here so that I can see where to apply some masking. And I'm going to make sure that I have something on the side here to work with. Okay. So I'm going to remove that. Put it on the surface here. Out of the way. And I'm now going to take some PCT 2M, uh, 3M tape. We remove some of the tape so that we have uncontaminated tape to work with. And this is the, the PCT 3M tape in a holder. I'm going to take off pieces here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to always fold the ends of the tape so that it's out of the way or I can release it easily from the surface and I'm going to bring it to these mark alignment marks I've placed on the surface here and I'm going to just wipe that through and I'm going to bring some more here a little bit more So now I'm ready to prep the gauge itself. So I'm going to remove this, put this on the side, and I'm going to bring my glass plate like that. And the first thing I'm going to do side safely out of the way and what I'm going to do now is to clean the glass plate so that I can install the tape on top of it a transfer tape and I'm using the neutralizer 5a a mild ammonia solution and I'm scrubbing this here Okay, so I'm going to take this up, uh, up here. I'm going to bring it to the surface like this. 
clean area and I'm going to just tape it down here so it doesn't move so I will take about five inches of tape off I always fold the edges of the tape or the ends of the tape so that I've got something to grip and I can always lift it off any surface without struggling and what I'm going to do is overlay the gauge like that and I'm rubbing it down I'm making sure that that it's down on the surface here and rubbing it out like that so now I have the gauge covered and I can place it back on the side I'm going to clean this up here and I'm going to bring my beam back and I'm going to pick up what I'm going to do here First of all, I'm going to take the conditioner and I'm going to wipe it again here. It's been a while. This has been exposed, so I'm going to just wipe through here and I'm going to dry it. And I'm now going to take some neutralizer and do the same. I'm going to wipe through once and I'm going to take the dry side and just wipe it once and finished and I'll take this and, and just make sure that it's dry again just like that finished so now I'm, I'm quite confident that it's, it's chemically cleaned and ready to accept the gauge so I'm going to lift lift the gauge up here lift it up and I have it right there read ready to install so I will bring this into position have to align it so that I can see the line easily so I reorientate this I'm going to check with my eye glass So I have a little loop, magnifying loop. I'll have a look to see whether the alignment marks are there. They're not there. I, I misaligned it. So when I want each step of the way, I can go back and to recorrect anything that's out of place. And I found that in placing this right now, it's not aligned with the alignment mark on the on the beam. So I'm going to lift this over here. And I lift this at about 15 degrees and this will just come away like that. So I don't want to bend the, the backing of the gauge. So I'm going to try it again. And we look here. I'm going to take this here and I'm just going to rub the gauge down right on the surface there 
to make sure that it's lined up and I'm going to check again and I'm happy with the alignment now the arrows that indicate the center of the grid on either side are, are lined up with the alignment mark on the beam so I'm happy with the location of the gauge so I'm going to now orientate it like this ready for bonding and just take the adhesive out and the catalyst so I have the gauge in place there and I'm going to now rub this down so it's on the surface it's not going to move and I'm now going to lift this back at 15 degrees lift it up and I'm going to fold it back like that to expose the gauge and I'll fold this back like that so it stays where it is so when I bring this back finally to bond it it's going to line up exactly where I want it so now we're going to take the catalyst the M1200 catalyst this is the M1200 kit that we have here and this is the quick set adhesive that is used uh, in most cases for res residual stress measurement or not residual stress measurement but but stress analysis work in the field or in the laboratory so we're going to apply the catalyst and we're going to wipe this about 10 times to get rid of any excess catalyst on the brush and I'm very careful that I place it out of the way I'm not going to knock it over and I'm going to look at this gauge here and bring this down not like that but like that and wipe across from the edge of the gauge only the backing of the gauge try to avoid putting it onto the tape that's holding it and wipe it across one time and make sure they're wet and that's what it's doing so having done that I'm going to close this I've already looked at the my watch here and I'm, and I'm going to give it a one minute drying time so we must we just wait for this to dry before we go, go to the next step okay So we've completed a one minute drying time for the catalyst and now we can get to the next step. Now in this uh, the next step we're going to apply some adhesive to the base of the gauge or should I say to, onto the material here and roll it down and then it will uh, it, we'll apply it that way. So what I want to do here uh, because I'm concerned about the, the profile of the protective coating on top of the gauge what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply some, some uh, plastic sheeting over the gauge to protect my fingers and I'm also going to use some uh, stiff sponge which is actually used for electronic chip uh, storage. I've got a, a piece of sponge here about three millimeter or quarter inch thickness. It's, it's soft enough to, to, to uh, compress and, and hold pressure on the complete gauge. I don't want to have the corners of the gauge lifting, particularly at the back where, where the, the wires come out. So I'm going to I'm going to apply adhesive over here.
and I'm going to now lift this up here and wipe this across and I'm going to now hold that for I would I'm going to hold it for three minutes because I want that adhesive which is uh, coming out at, at the the cable transition, I want that to dry as well. So I'm going to give it a three minute dry. Now I'm keeping a constant pressure on the sponge so that I have uniform pressure over the gauge. And as you as you're holding that there, if you get any fatigue in your in your thumb pressure, you can always put a finger on top of that just to release the pressure on your your muscles there. So you can just relax and, and watch the clock. You don't want to lift the pressure. You don't want to lift the pressure away, your finger away, at any time at all. So you just have to be patient. Make sure that you hold that pressure. You don't want any movement of the gauge. Okay. So I'm going to remove this now. Take away this protective sheet, and I have a look at my gauge over there, and I can see that it hopefully is bonded. Uh, and I'm now going to. Now if one is putting down a lot of gauges, you can <clears throat> put down a gauge like this and then go to the next gauge on a structure and continue doing that, leaving this protective tape over the gauge to stop contamination while you're setting up all the other gauges the same way. When you're ready, you could come back now to take away the tape to inspect the gauge and make sure everything is fine. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to slowly... I'm going to pick up this because you see I've protected the end so that it doesn't stick to the, the surface. I can now pick this up and what I'm going to do is roll it back, not vertically. If I come back like this vertically to the gauge, I'll lift the gauge. The gauge is not designed for tension away from the material. It's designed for shear strain transfer. So I'm going to bring this back at 180 degrees to the surface and I always put it at a slight angle so that I expose the one corner of the gauge and I can look I've got my little magnifying loop here and I can look here and I can bring it to the corner of the gauge and as I roll it back I can inspect that and make sure that the glue has come out the top of the gauge and the corner of the gauge is not is not uh, unbonded. If I'm happy with that I will turn this back this way and roll this back and inspect the corner again very slowly and it's also bonded so I'm happy with that. So now I can just bring this back and, and slowly roll it back. If you, if you do quickly you will take the gauge with you. So we roll it back and expose the rest of the gauge like that and we roll it all the way back like that and not to contaminate my fingers or anything with wet adhesive because we haven't didn't put any catalyst down here so the the adhesive on its own is taking time to dry and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wipe this to get rid of any wet adhesive and I have my gauge there and if I look here at the corner of the gauge where the at the cable comes out I can inspect that to see whether it's bonded and it looks that, that it's on the surface it's being held down so I know that the complete backing of the gauge is bonded and if I inspect this again I can see that once you've taken away the tape you can see everything with good lighting I would normally have a flashlight here so that I can project the light to enhance the image that I'm looking at and what I'm now looking at is to make sure that my alignment marks of the gate are where I wanted them and they are 
they're in place and then this is 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 parallel to the edge of the of the beam the gauge measuring direction now what we have here is we protected the the ends of the beam with contamination of wet adhesive when we rolled it out and I'm going to just strip this away and throw it away here and we now have limited uh, adhesive spreading out around the gauge when you come to put down protective coating on the gauge you don't want the protective coating to go over a, a remnant adhesive on the side you want the protective coating to, to bond directly to the clean surface of the of the material so this is what we have at this stage so I'm going to now <coughs> the next step is to to put a strain relief in front of the of, of the wire the cable away from the strain gauge so that when you hold down the the end of the cable so that it doesn't it doesn't get ripped off and the gauge disappearing if anyone pulls the cable I'm going to now take a, a, a q-tip here the cotton swab I'm going to put a fingernail right here close to the, the backing of the gauge and I'm going to roll this underneath I'm going to show you like this let me rotate this I'm going to put my fingernail over here I'm going to lift this close to the gauge and I'm, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring my fingernail there and put down a strain relief and if I pull this out I've got a strain relief that is 90 degrees coming off the surface 90 degrees a half semicircle and now I'm going to take some tape I don't want to go too far before I secure even temporarily I'm going to secure my cable on the surface so that I inadvertently do not delaminate the gauge by pulling on the cable so I'm going to do that and I'm always going to put a, a fold over here so that I can take this off at the end game at the end, at end of the installation of the installation so here I have my gauge bonded and uh, I'm happy with the, with, with the way it, it's, it, it's, it looks so I'm now going to take some rosin solvent cleaning uh, cleaning fluid and I'm going to clean the area wipe it down to get rid of any contamination we've got mastic from the tape which is sitting on top of the gauge on top of the surface and we want to decontaminate for the protective coating that comes on afterwards so I'm going to flush this like this very well And I'm going to never put this back in the bottle as is. I'm going to just wipe this to dry it and close the bottle. And I'm going to take this here and I'm going and I'm going to wipe this gently over here. It's a protective, it's a CEA gauge, it's got protective uh, laminated uh, a protective polyimid. Uh, backing on top of the of the grid to protect the grid so I'm, I'm not concerned about damaging the grid in this instance I'm going to do this again I'm going to wipe on the side like this generally from one end to the other underneath the little loop and uh, I'm going to wipe that put that in there and do the same uh, what I'm trying to do is to physically with the, with the rosin solvent chemicals I'm trying to remove any any contamination on the surface so I'm going to close that bottle and I'm going to now wipe this down like this I'm going to take this side here and do the same just like that so I'm going to close that like that and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to I'm going to take this off let me first of all take some tape here 
Okay. And I'm I'm going to just hold it like that. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove this and I'm going to put some permanent tape down so that we have it in place. And here I have the tape. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply it over here. Roll it around like that and bring it back again and rub it down on the side and again on the top here and on the on the side here so that I'm holding this very firmly on the surface of the beam and now if I hold this like this the it cannot pull the gauge off the beam okay the sensitive part of the gauge is being protected by any mechanical pulling of the of the of the wire of the cable the lead wire so here we have it before we do anything before we put a protective coating on it the first thing I want to do is I want to measure or should I say measure to find out if there's any contamination that is sitting on the solar joints or on the gauge itself that could be possibly allowing some current to flow from the circuitry into the beam itself. So I'm using my model 1300 gauge installation tester and I'm going to take the earthing wire and clamp it, on, clamp it onto the side of the beam. I'm going to just put it over here. It could be anywhere on the beam. It's making good contact. And I'm going to take the end of the cable here. Now, I have to do this here, prepare the end of the cable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the cable as it is. You've got a three wire cable coming off here, the red, the white and the black. And the actual gauge wiring puts the red wire on one tab of the, comes with the red wire on one tab of the gauge and the, the black and the white come to the other tab to give you the three wire method installation for the gauges. By using the three wires you are, are balancing, keeping the balance of the bridge and also you have temperature compensation of the wiring as long as the, any part of the wire is at the same temperature. So what we have here is we have the I'm going to take the ends off here and what I do, very fine wire, very difficult to roll with your fingers. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the, the round nose tweezers. And I'm going to, I feel the tweezers on my fingers. So I just rotate the wires together. And one takes one's time. It take, doesn't take long to twist it together. And each, each wire, there's I believe seven strands in the wire in each in each conductor and we are going to just twist them together so that we contain them we can control the wiring so here we have it Alright, so now I've got three wires that will go to some instrumentation when we come to set it up you know, for recording the strain. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to attach the other lead from the gauge installation tester to all three wires. So I bring it all together like this. And I actually, I don't, I'm not going to roll them together, it's not necessary. I've got a, a, an alligator clip here and I'm just going to clip onto the wires try and get them all together which is fine and we're going to just press this 
we're going to press the MIG um, uh, um, button and it goes off scale to infinity which means that the inst installation is, is showing that we've got resistance to ground of 20 greater than 20 gig ohm and this unit is applying 15 volts excitation between the gauge circuitry the gauge foil between the gauge foil and the beam itself so we see that we have a limit a very good resistance to ground uh, which tells us that this gauge is, is okay in terms of the quality checked like this so when we apply the protective coating over it and we allow it to dry we'll then find out whether it is after after it's dried to find out again whether it still maintains that integrity of resistance to ground very important every every gauge you install you're going to take a reading on the resistance to ground and you're also going to document on whatever you do you're going to document the resistance of the lead wire of, of the gauge uh, resistance from the end of the lead wires so that everything is written down and everyone knows the date that you put it installed the system and check the gauge so we can take this away we know that this is okay and what I'm going to, what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to take I'm going to do a quick check because anything can go wrong if you don't check it I'm now going to check with an ohmmeter that I do have a resistance of 120 ohms or should I say uh, 350 ohms so I'm going to uh, connect my ohmmeter between the red wire to the black and I can I, sorry I can read here I can read sorry it's a 120 so I'm reading at 121.7 ohms if I go to the white wire I should be reading the same 121.9 ohms if I read between the black and the white wire it's short circuiting the black and white short circuits on the one tab of the gauge and I'm reading 2 ohms so it's telling me what the resistance of the lead wire is as well as giving me a reading of the resistance of the the gauge together with the lead wire so I know as much as I need to know about the resistance of the actual installation as it stands with no load on it it's also when you're checking this with your meter or you're checking it with your gauge installation tester the resistance you're also checking to make sure that the solder itself is not giving you a problem with the resistance of the gauge it's checking end to end from the, the, the cable output to the instrument is checking the installation resistance wires from end to end it gives you another qualification of the gauge so we are happy with that as it is and we can now all that's left for us to do is to put protective coating over it so I'm going to do that and what I'm going to do what I will do is just leave it like that. I'm going to take a simple coating, the M coat A, polyurethane coating, with a brush cap top. And I've cleaned this, decontaminated it. And I'm now going to apply, first of all, over the gauge. Make sure that you've coated it well. And I also want to go underneath the strain relief and make sure everything is bonded down or should I say everything is coated and what I'm going to do is I'm going to coat to the edge of the beam to make sure that it covers up any uh, it goes past any residual adhesive on the surface and try and end up with a straight line protective coating at the top there and you have to give yourself 10 to 20 minutes for this to dry properly and in fact it, you, it should perhaps dry 24 hours to give you a, 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 a more a, 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 better, a better finish on the protection of the actual or curing of the uh, polyurethane M-coat coating so that's it